When you're applying to medicine, one of the main things that you want to avoid is overwhelm. If you get too stressed or if you kind of lose sight of the bigger goal, sometimes that will jeopardize your performance and ultimately risk you not getting into medical school that year. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about six ways to avoid that and to manage the balance between everything that's going on while you're applying to medical school. The number one and easiest to implement tip is to get a good calendar and a good planner. The first thing that you need to do is understand the timeline of the med school application. Remember that if you are starting medical school in September 2026, you will submit your application in September 2025, and that means you should start preparing really around September 2024. If you want to know all the hurdles along the way, go to our website in the description below, and there's a page called Free Resources where you can download a timetable that maps out every single step that you need to be aware of about the med school application and when you need to be thinking of it. Then when it comes to the actual day of each thing, it's always good to think of ways that you're gonna plan your day around the items that you need to do in that specific day. There's a really good way of planning that, which I call the retrospective timetable. And I talk about in this video here, which I'd recommend that you watch to know exactly on a granular level, how to plan your week or your month of revision. The second really important skill to learn, not just for the med school application for life as a doctor as well is learning to prioritize. What you need to do is understand all of the things that you need to do and ask yourself the question, which of these is the most important? Often the most important one will make the other things easier or make them less important. So by doing one, you might be eliminating a couple others. It can be incredibly difficult to manage A-levels or final year exams of university at the same time as trying to say, do the UCAT for example. So sometimes it does help to get somebody in your corner to help kind of guide you as to what the priority is and where you should put your focus and a big part of what we do on the Future Doc program. A third way and something that is really great to keep you motivated is the acronym SMART for SMART goals I'm sure you've heard of. So that means specific. So instead of saying generally, oh, I'm just gonna do some UCAT revision for this, actually saying, Today I'm going to do uh, verbal reasoning and I'm going to do the contradictions section of that. If you want to check out a course where you can learn about exactly what sections you need to do, you can check out this video here. But I will say, I'm going to do this section today and then that is very specific. The M stands for measurable, which means that you need an end point to say, when I have reached this point, I have done that. The A stands for attainable, which means that it's actually possible to get done. The R stands for relevant. So for example, saying I'm going to go and read a book to try and help my verbal reasoning is not necessarily the most impactful way to achieve that task. And then the T stands for time dependent. So basically you set a time frame by which you want to achieve this goal. Number four is to ask for help. Whether that be just co-working with another student who's maybe sitting the UCAT or maybe applying to medical school, just so that you can bounce ideas off each other, use each other to kind of uh, understand what's important and also practice. It's a really good way of doing it. Make sure you pick your partner wisely because some people can stress you out but really also if you want somebody to be more of a mentor you could consider applying to our future dot program and you can check out the video for that here where we have had a ridiculous success rate now with getting people into medical school at their first time of being with us. And our results are just only getting better and better as the years go on, despite it getting more competitive. So if you want a mentor, that is a great way to kind of help you maximize your chances of getting in. The next two are probably actually the most important ones. The first is making sure that you maintain your health. Think of your body as the most important asset that you own. And it's like a machine that you need to maintain and nurture so that you can get the most out of it. The same way that if you had a car and you never changed the oil or you revved it to the absolute max so that it completely burns out, think of your body as the same. So the way to maintain your body, you know the things that matter eating right, probably the most important is getting sleep, and then exercising to keep your mind fresh. Those three things, if you can maintain them regularly during the med school application and for the rest of your medical career, you will do very well, I promise. And then the final one, which is kind of in that same vein, is taking breaks. It's so important to nurture relationships to kind of keep your vitality up. And often taking a break is nurturing that relationship with yourself, whether you go and do something that you find comforting, maybe if you go and meditate, or if you go and speak to a friend. These are just things that really energize people depending on what your flavor of taking a break is. And it's just so important for maintaining your longevity. Burnout is a serious problem when people are in medical school, applying to medical school, post-medical school, 
all of it. So for me, that is really important to make sure that I maintain my ability to work, take lots of breaks to recharge so that instead of doing lots of hours being half-hearted or tired or not fully functioning at my best, doing half the time with twice as much focus is way more effective. So those are some ways that you can maintain your sanity during the med school application. If you wanna maximize your chances of success, I recommend that you watch this video here, but also if you wanna get some free resources from the FutureDoc website, check out the link in the description below and have a look and hopefully you'll find them really useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.